Today at shopdap.com, we're going to be replacing a serpentine belt on a Mark 7 GTI. Okay, so serpentine belt checking and replacing. Today we're going to be replacing this belt and showing you how uh, this vehicle does have pretty low mileage. It's about 36,000 miles. You would not normally need to replace it then, but because this vehicle is going to be gone soon, we're going to be showing you how to replace it that way. Uh, obviously we'll have that information out there. Normally VW is gonna have a checking interval, which is usually around 60,000 miles, I believe 50 or 60,000 miles. And that's going to be when you check it, you're looking for cracks in the belt. So what you would do is remove it, flip it upside down, look for cracks along the way. And that's when how you're gonna know when to replace the belt. If you do find those cracks, you know it's time to replace it. It's not a bad practice just to replace it at like 50K anyway, just to make sure that you have a solid serpentine belt and don't end up stuck stranded on the road because your car breaks a serpentine belt. Uh, again, not catastrophic failure like a timing belt would be, but you don't, you don't want to do, deal with that and it's pretty easy to replace this. So let's go ahead and show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are at the hood of our Mark 7. This vehicle does have a catch can, which we've actually loosened up and we're going to be moving it out of the way so that you can see what we got going on here. You could probably replace this with this in here, but for ease of access and seeing what's going on in the belt system, it's best to move it out of the way. So basically this is a pretty simple system because all we have is an alternator, AC compressor, and then the crank pulley. This is gonna be a pretty easy belt to replace. So let's get in a little bit closer so you can see what we got going on. Okay, so as we pull in a little bit tighter here, you can see we have our 16 millimeter on the tensioner down here, alternator is down here, the AC compressor at the bottom, and in the back towards the rear of the engine is the uh, crank pulley itself where the serpentine belt rides on. So we are going to grab our 16 millimeter socket and we have a ratchet here, and we're just gonna push down, and it's gonna bottom actually against the bracket for the engine mount right here. So as you can see, we've created slack here. So what we're gonna do is actually push this up and over and then pop it off. And so now we have that off and we're gonna un unroute it from the system and pop our new belt on. Okay, so now we have our old belt off and what you're gonna wanna do is flip it like this and inspect it and just see if there are cracks along here. You'll see it kind of split the, uh, across the belt, not actually with the grain of it. And that will be your inspection process for any of these belts. You can just run around it. Again, this is a pretty new belt, so that's not gonna have any cracking of any major kind. And then we have our replacement belt from, from VW. And you will wanna, what you, a lot of technicians like to do is make sure that either, uh, the, for example, this one, we have a genuine one and a genuine one. We can match the part numbers. On some belts, they age enough that you can't read the numbers anymore. People like to just compare and make sure you have the, the same number of ribs and that type of stuff. Obviously, if you're getting it from us, we're hoping we're, we're going to try to get you the right one the first time. And so you don't have to repeat that. And we will have links to the correct one for uh, this vehicle in the description. So what we're going to start to do is get it routed and when you say get it routed you're going to want to get it on most of the pulleys before you try to get it near the last one so we're going to try to get it underneath and start with the pulley uh, for the crank in the back And so if you see here, we have it routed correctly and all we need to do is pull it up and over, which again is often easier said than done. And depending on the slack you have available, it may, it may be pretty tough, but this is what you essentially wanna to do to get this belt started uh, before you try to do anything with the tensioner to loosen, to relieve tension on it, to be able to pull it up. You wanna make sure that's in place pretty good first. Now in this circumstance, we have a ratchet on there and you can try a ratchet or a wrench, really whatever you more feel more comfortable with. And you can see as you kind of roll it on there, it gets pretty tough to get it on there. So what you wanna do is once you hit this point where you feel like you can't get it over, instead of trying to force it, make sure that the other parts of the belt are actually uh, in a place where completely in the channel on all the other places to make sure that you're not 
causing yourself a problem. And in this case, that was not. So that's always gonna cause an issue where if you have one of them not seated all the way in. As you can see there, we got it on there and we're all set to go. And normally, you know, we're gonna reinstall our catch can, but normally you would be finished with this. You will wanna make sure before you start this car, make sure you eye this belt up, make sure it's lined up between the, on all the grooves and all of this, because if it's not and you start it up, you're gonna throw this belt off and, and destroy a brand new belt. So uh, that's all set. Thanks so much for watching our DIY on how to replace a serpentine belt on a Mark 7 GTI. Again, support for purchases for parts like this or any others help support videos just like this one. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it.